Thank you. We are indeed honored to have with us, for the third, third year in a row, the Mount Alto Motion Picture Orchestra under the direction of Rocky Sauer. This promises to be a great program as always. And as always, there's a few announcements before the program. And once again, we'd like to thank our, our, our sponsor for the festival, Sears, which, uh, which provides, yes, they provide parking all year round for all Portage events. And uh, we're very grateful to them. So we, in turn, are going to pass on a little bit of Sears news to you this Sunday between 6 and 9. They're going to have a friends and family event and up to 15% 15, 15 off everything in the store from 6 to 9. From 6 to 9. Here it's Sears at Six Corners. So, you, so if you can, please attend that one. Uh, we have, uh, as I mentioned last week, at the end of the festival, everybody's kind of bummed out, like, what are we going to do next week? Well, this year, you can come after the festival, that exact Friday, August 31st, and see the artists for free as, as guests of the Portage Theater. And you can pick up tickets out in the lobby uh, at intermission. So uh, we have the tickets available for you. Please attend that event. Now, next week, we're going to have Tim Baker back from Louisville. He's going to come to Stella Dallas. Should be a great film. So, uh, we, we'd like to see you all for that one. And of course, the uh, tremendous cost of putting on uh, the festival is uh, provided by membership subscriptions. So if you can, please consider joining the Silent Film Society of Chicago. The, the, uh, the funds from that go to fund this festival. And so uh, to our members, we thank you. Please consider for those of you who are not, please consider a membership out in the lobby. Uh, there's brochures, pick them up, and uh, join up. So I'm not going to get too lengthy here. I'd like to turn it over right now to uh, uh, the maestro, and you're going to be in for a great treat tonight uh, from the uh, Mount Alto Motion Picture Orchestra. Please greet Mr. Rodney Sauer. I, I hadn't prepared anything to say about this film, so I'm just going to ramble on for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Douglas Fairbanks um, was born and raised in Denver, Colorado. He played at the Village Theater stage out there, so he's always been a favorite of us being from the area. Um, he, when he started in Hollywood, he made a series of comedies that were similar to the kinds of comedies that Buster Keaton was making, although not as, as you know, carefully thought out. They're very fun to watch, um, but they were basic light um, comedic fare, and then he read a story called the, Mark, called the Curse of Capistrano and bought the movie rights and made a movie called The Mark of Zorro, and that changed his entire career. It was an enormous hit, um, and basically invented the genre of the masked superhero with a rich alter ego who saves the world, which we're still seeing today. Um, he then made a series of costume pictures. Most of them involved him as a young plucky person who does a lot of amazing things and saves a princess. And it, he started to get a little bit tired of this formula by the time he made this film. And one of the reasons this is my favorite is you really don't know where this film is going. He set it in Argentina. He introduced a religious element as though it were an Argentinian folk tale that maybe had a bit of a reference to the Virgin of Guadalupe or something of that, the Lourdes Shrine, all of this stuff. And he threw it all together. So we've got, you know, um, characters that you don't normally get in a film of this kind. Um, it, he brought a bunch of Argentinians up to play the extras, so you'll see a lot of actual gauchos in the background. Um, he basically discovered the actress um, Lupe Velez. This was her first starring role, and she is an absolute hoot. Um, what you're going to hear from us um, is a score that could have been heard back when this movie was shown. We have a very large collection of music that belonged to silent film orchestras. It was the job of every silent film orchestra to create their own scores. The films did not come with a score. You would watch the film, you would pull pieces from your library for every scene. So that's what we do. All the music we're playing was written and orchestrated and published and made available to orchestras. 
um, but it wasn't necessarily for this particular film. That was a choice that, that I made when I was putting the score together. This is really just the third time we've done this score. We did it in San Francisco, and we've played it in Colorado, and so it's kind of a new one for us, but we enjoy it very much. The Argentinian locale lets us play some of our tango music and Spanish waltzes. Um, I think if there's anything else to say, we are going to take a short intermission in the middle. Also, if you enjoy the music you're hearing, we have recorded a lot of scores for silent movies on DVD and Blu-ray, and we will have some of those up there at the table. Um, we also have a CD, which is excerpts of um, silent film scores, so some of the music that you're hearing tonight uh, will be on there, but there's a lot of this music in the repertoire, and very few people are playing it, so we're always pleased when we get opportunities to perform this, this once very popular but now forgotten music in front of such a wonderful audience. So thank you very much.